Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's SR Arcade, and I haven't made a video in a really long time, so I'm here today to do a console-related video. Um, something I've been kind of tinkering with lately is uh, I've been back to messing with uh, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Genesis stuff, and something I'm picking up on I didn't get to last year was working on uh, some of the cartridges I've always wanted but never been able to obtain, like this one, Eliminate Down. Uh, it's a Japanese-only release, a very rare shmup, very, very good game. It's it's very good if you haven't played it. Uh, check it out, but uh, if you want to buy this game, it's very expensive. It's a collector item. Uh, most people who buy this just let it sit on a shelf just to collect it, and I actually want to play my game. So, I didn't buy this. I actually created my own reproduction cartridge, and I'm going to show you today kind of how that works. So, here's my Sega Genesis here and my reproduction cartridge inside, which is actually a test cart. I'm gonna make a, a real cart for this. But uh, this is all done, and you know, totally based on how much you wanna spend, this is the cheapest way to go, but you get what you pay for, okay? So this is a Willem programmer, okay? W-I-L-L-E-M. I cannot tell you what version this is. Um, it's one of the later versions, past five, because um, I did buy it about a year ago. It's very inexpensive. You can get this pretty cheap. It has a, an expansion board here. This is, does not come with it. This is actually something you buy separate. This is to do the uh, 40 and 42 pin dip uh, ROMs. You can, you, otherwise, this is all you get for your, what, 30 some dollars. But usually you can buy in a package and get this added on for 50 bucks or whatever. And you can see this is running on a, a parallel port. So it's like a printer style connector and uh, it does require its own power supply. You can see there's a USB port here, but this does not work properly for burning ROMs. You need the 12 volts, and you need to have a proper power supply. So I just found a, I got like an Extron power supply here, and it's rated at uh, output 12 volt at one amp. So, and that's worked good for me. I just add a little connector on it, bam, I got a power supply. So you'll need to have a computer with a parallel port. I didn't have one, so I ended up buying this really cheap at Electronics Junk Store. This is uh, a little baby uh, Elite Group ECS motherboard. Um, and it is a PM18M socket 479 motherboard. So it's like a little ARM CPU on there. And uh, this came with everything I needed. It's got a plethora of ports on the back. It's got a compact flash card on the bottom. That's what the OS is installed on. And I just stuck a stick of RAM in there, just grabbed a little power supply. Uh, I'll probably have to get an ITX case at some point and have it all built in. But uh, this has a uh, breakout on the side here, it breaks out so I can plug into my port. It's got dual Ethernet, four USB ports, VGA. Um, Gosh, three I.O. ports, it's the top of deluxe. This thing is a sweet little motherboard. And for 20, I think $17 I paid for it. I couldn't go wrong, and it was everything I needed. So with these things all combined, you basically have a tool suite to burn your own ROMs and read your own ROMs. So let me uh, switch the video really quick to the desktop here. And you get the software. Now, here's the downside. This is a cheap solution, but it is very finicky and complex. So I'm going to go over all the settings I've set it to in order to read and write these 42-pin uh, cartridge. So here is a, here's a ROM here. This one came, I pulled these off of old arcade boards. Uh, most of the boards I get are usually have 16 meg ROMs on them. So this is a 16 megabyte. I just label them on the back real quick. They, it's, it's on here uh, and very faintly it's, you can read it. It's on here. It's an MC, uh, or um, what do you call it? Uh, one second here, I can't even see it in the light. So they'll have like, uh, they have like C160 or C800, um, C400. That tells basically the size of it. And um, I can go into the software, and I'd have to actually tell it. So like right here, it's set up for, uh, you can see, 27C800. So I was working on an 8 megabyte. 8 megabit, not megabyte, megabit, 8 megabit ROM, which is what I just burned Eliminate down to. And uh, these are erasable, so 
if uh, you get an old game with a bunch of ROMs on it, you just clear this little uh, window off here. You can use some uh, uh, alcohol and Q-tip and rub it and get it clean. And you put it into this little UV light box. You can get this for about 25, 30 bucks on eBay. Put the ROMs in here and make sure you position them correctly. They have to be positioned like that. If you turn them sideways, they might not get the light. But I found, you know, set them all like that in a row, fit five or six in here, close it, turn it on, and run it by an hour. Sometimes it takes a couple passes, but usually the first for an hour, it's more than enough to clear off a ROM. So uh, once you've done that, Let's go over to this really quick, and this is probably going to be a pain in the neck here to show you. Let me grab a flashlight. Okay. The settings for this, because this is what messed me up so much. There are several jumpers right here. You can see they're upside down. You can see A23, A19 and they have like a P1, A20, A21, A22, and an A19. There's two A19 jumpers. And what this does is this applies the additional voltages for the additional addresses needed for the 42 pin uh, chips. So you have to run these little red wires over to your little expansion board here. And you can see they have the corresponding a19, A20, A21, and then has VPP. We're only interested in the first three, A19, A20, and A21. Now where I was getting goofed up was, like I said, there's two A19s on this thing here. Okay, see they have an A19 towards the back. Oh, let's see if I can point to it. See the A19 right above my finger? I leave that one disconnected and I use the A19 that's towards the parallel connector all the way in the front okay so that's the one I have it connected to so it's A19 and I skip one and then I'm using the A21 and an A20 and I just plug them into this here that was the one thing that made this work from not working in the back here you just plug this into the ZIF socket push down the little lever okay so another thing before I go reading ROMs and I forget, you have a couple other settings here. See these uh, red dip switches? This is uh, very important too. So you got on off on off. How do you know which one to put? Quite simply, it's on your software. When you select the chip you're going to burn for an 8 meg chip, it's telling me right there. One is down, two is up, three is up, four is down. Okay, so you go across that, you just match them so that that matches. And right to the left of that, you have another one that says VPP, and you got a little blue icon and a black box. That's the jumper setting. So you can go over here, and you can see the jumper setting. I have it on the bottom too, and the one is open, just like it is on the program. Okay? A couple other things to check. Uh, I lost my flashlight. Okay. You have um, writing voltage. You want to make sure you leave the 5 volt setting over here on J8. Okay, so make sure that's at 5. You have another one that says J7, J6, VPP set. Okay, you want that to be, and you look right above it, there's a little, you get 12. 5 volts, 15 volts, 12, 21 volts. You want to be using the 12.5. So J7 should be the first two pins. And you can see J7 is, uh, where's, there's J6. And J7 is up here. So I have the first two pins and then the second two pins. So according to this little table right here, I'm at 12.5 volts. Very, very important. That's the voltage it's using to write during the right process, okay? So if you have all that stuff all perfect, then you can plug in your zip socket. Then you can grab your ROM. I have a 16 meg ROM. I already wrote something to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Okay, and then apply my, I do this all with the uh, power supply unplugged. And you'll notice I'm doing this on a rug 
probably the stupidest thing. Like, I could get a static charge and just blow this whole thing to whatever. So I don't want to hear about it. I know. But I don't have a table. I'm just so ghetto fight over here. Okay, so that's all set up. Go to my program. Go to Actions. Well, I got to change my chip because I just plugged in a 16... Oh, that's a 16 meg chip. So I'm going to go to Action. I know it's hard to read here. Or Device, sorry. Device. Go to my EP-ROM. And I'm going to go down to the 27 uh, C. And I'm going to choose the C160 for 16 meg ROM. I have my buffer from the Eliminate down in there, so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to actually go to Action. I'm going to read this chip, and it'll bring up a dialog. The difference between the dip switching, if you were to change the chips radically, like I said before, this red would totally change up, but because I'm reading a, you know, between an 8 meg and a 8 megabit and 16 megabit, the dip settings are exactly the same. You just got to make sure you tell the program you've changed the chip. Otherwise, you're going to get like funky read errors and stuff like that. So now it's it's reading this chip and pulling down all the info. While I'm doing that, let me cut off the uh, the Sega Genesis really quick, and let's take a look at the test cart. What I did was I took a terrible game like Last Action Hero, uh, opened it up, I pulled off the ROM, and the easiest way to do that is to destroy it. Just cut all the pins off of it, and then remove each pin with solder one by one. Okay, unfortunately, I did kind of ruin one of these uh, little uh, solder eyelets there, so I had to run a jumper, but uh, this is my, like, 8 megabyte test cartridge, and the rule of thumb is if you're going to find a donor cartridge, you want to kind of find one that's the same size and, you know, megabit to the one you're building. So, Eliminate Down's an 8 megabit game. Uh, Last Action Hero is an 8 megabit game, so it made a perfect donor cartridge. Uh, that's so all the pins all do the right stuff. Because uh, if between the 16 megs and the 8 megs, there's differences. And the lucky thing is with Mega Drive and Genesis, these EP ROMs are one to one. They just plug right in, there's no rewiring, no changing pins, not like Nintendo or Super Nintendo or anything like that. It's so easy. Just plug it in and play it. So I've programmed this ROM with Eliminate Down, doing all the settings I was showing you before. And um, the only thing that I, was a gotcha was I thought this failed a whole bunch of times because during the verify I kept saying verified failed and it gave me an address error. And then I read online that there's a bug in the Willem software that'll tell you that, but they said go try it anyway because it might work. And sure enough, it does. So just keep that in mind. So I got this little socket. I can pop this out and I can plug in another 8 meg game and play it just the same. Uh, this will not fit inside of a cartridge like this. This is too fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like test cartridges for like all the different sizes. I'll make a 4 meg, an 8 meg, and a 16 meg. And then I can test the games this way, make sure the chip works, and then I can get donor cartridges, plug in the chip and solder it directly so I can close the cart, and then I'll have a final version, you know. And that's, that's kind of cool. So here I just downloaded what was on that, and you'll see that you can see some text. It does this kind of gobbly gook. Well, that's because it's got the byte swap. And that's one more thing before you burn you have to swap bytes. That's in the action menu. And you go down to uh, swap byte. So if I was to open this in an emulator, it would not work now. But then if I do this, you can see Rolling Thunder. This is Rolling Thunder 2. Now if I was to open an emulator, it would work fine. So this is set up for emulator. If I go back to action, hit swap byte. It flip flops every byte. So now it's kind of uh, backwards. Now it's set to be burned to a chip and play on a Genesis. Okay, so that's a very important step as well. If you're not swapping the bytes, it won't work. So I'm trying to do this all as fast as I can to explain how it works. Uh, this is in a nutshell kind of thing. Uh, so we just read down a game. Uh, I cannot write a game to this because it's obviously got something on it. I'd have to put it in there for an hour. I'd come back and I'd go back to actions and there's a thing here called blank check. You run that. Watch, I'll do it on this. It's going to tell me right away. See, it says device is not empty. But it would basically do a check over the whole ROM. If it's empty, it comes back and says program is empty, or device is empty. And then you can program to it. It will not let you program to something that has something written anywhere. So that's it. That's programming and building uh, Genesis uh, game ROMs, um, putting them back on cartridges to make reproductions. 
Um, you know, it's not like I'm turning around and selling this stuff. I do this to play the games, and I, it's like the collecting scene has gotten out of control with some of the prices, and some of the stuff is just so rare. I'm never going to own it. I'm never going to spend $150 on a stupid Genesis game. And I like playing stuff on the real hardware. I mean, I could get an EverDrive kind of thing and do that too, but there's not a whole lot of games I want, you know. I just want to own maybe a dozen and just have the boxes and everything. I make my own boxes and just enjoy them that way. So maybe this helps. Uh, ask questions if you have questions. And like I said, you get what you pay for. This programmer is going to have problems. It's going to not burn certain ROMs for no reason at all. You're going to go over it over and over and just figure out there's nothing wrong with it. It's because this is a piece of junk. It's just cheap. If you want to spend the money and buy a real expensive uh, programmer, uh, it's going to work a lot better and probably work every time. Um, but, you know, I did this on the cheap. I was just playing with it. I just wanted to have fun with it. I spent 50, 60 bucks, and now I can make some Genesis games. But it's been a learning process, so it's hard to use, but it gets the job done at the end of the day. So the next job is I'm reading all the ROMs on this Jurassic Park board to figure out which one is bad because this game has some ROM issues. So it's it's a tool. So. Anyway, I hope that worked out. I know this video is real long, so uh, I'll say goodbye, and uh, I'll talk to you later. See ya.